won a selection. Top Republican Ryan will defend Trump. The most senior elected us Republican official has said he will not defend Donald Trump after remarks he made about groping women led to outrage. House of Representatives Speaker Paul Ryan vowed to focus on defending seats in Congress but did not end his endorsement of the party's nominee. Mr. Trump tweeted that Mr. Ryan should not waste his time fighting him. Earlier Democratic rival Hillary Clinton cast doubt on Mr. Trump's apology for the 11-year-old remarks. On Sunday, Mr. Trump described his words as locker room talk. In a bitter televised debate, a month before the US presidential election, Mr. Trump denied he had groped anyone. Mrs. Clinton tweeted on Monday that if he To Walking Fine Line by Anthony Zerker, BBC News Paul Ryan, the highest ranking Republican office holder, has officially given the signal. The SS Trump is sinking, and it's time for members of his party to calmly, quietly head to the lifeboats. Republican control of Congress must be maintained at all costs, the House Speaker asserted in his call to congressional rank and file on Monday, lest Hillary Clinton have the ability to advance her party's legislative priorities and seat sympathetic Supreme Court justices without opposition. It's notable that after reports he was mulling a fool in endorsement of the Republican nominee, Mr. Ryan is apparently trying to walk a fine line between abandonment and loyalty to his putative standard bearer. His decision evokes shades of 1996 when Republican nominee Hunt Dole's doomed presidential campaign rolled along, oblivious to a party apparatus that was focusing exclusively on down-ballot races. It's worth keeping in mind that while Mr. Ryan is sounding the abandoned ship alarm, Donald Trump may not play the stoic captain watching from the bridge. He's shown no loyalty to a Republican establishment that never truly embraced him and may have no plums with lashing out at first while friend and foe alike in the campaign's final turbulent days. Asked about the video in the debate, Mr. Trump turned his fire on Mrs. Clinton's husband, ex-president Bill Clinton, whom he described as abusive to women. She refused to address the comments. At least 38 senior Republicans, including senators, members of Congress, and state governors have withdrawn their support since the video surfaced on Friday. But late on Monday, Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus said nothing has changed in relation to the campaign. I think the issue of the remarks about groping would free us election. Could Republicans still dump Donald Trump? For all Republicans out there longing to boot Donald Trump off the presidential ticket even at this late stage, there are four keywords, death, declination, or otherwise. The Republican National Committee RNC sets out in its Rule 9 the terms for filling vacancies in nominations. It reads, The Republican National Committee is hereby authorized and empowered to fill any and all vacancies which may occur by reason of death, declination, or otherwise of the Republican candidate for President of the United States. Death may be off the agenda. For when was Trump last ahead? The Republican candidate has made substantial gains on Mrs. Clinton since her leads of about 20% in the summer of 2015 when the field was far wider, but he has only crept ahead of her a few times. The last came after the Republican National Convention at the end of July when Mr. Trump officially accepted the party's nomination. The lead didn't last long though, with his rival receiving a similar boost to her ratings at the end of the Democratic National. 5. Trump v. Clinton Who won the debate? We were promised a nuclear war between the candidates over allegations of sexual impropriety, and it didn't take long for it to blow up. But unlike a real nuclear war, with its mutually assured destruction, the participants were left standing after the exchange and had to slug it out for another hour. What resulted was a muddled mess, with both candidates gaining the upper hand on occasion and stumbling in other moments. Given that Mr. Trump's campaign has been in free fall over the past 48 hours, anything less than a total Jack Nicholson at the end of a few good men style meltdown on stage has to be deemed a marginal success on his part, and so it was. The prospect that any significant portion of what is sure to be a massive television audience emerged from the evening with any change of opinion, however, is unlikely.
If Mr. Trump's overarching goal is to offer a performance that would allow him to cobble together an electoral majority on election day, then his sometimes glowering, often aggressive performance will fall far short. Team Clinton, on the other hand, has to view this as an opportunity missed. Her supporters were hoping for a political kill shot that would push Mr. Trump's remaining supporters toward the exit and turn the last month of the campaign into a glorified knock-up operation. While she landed some staggering blows, it was by no means a rout. Instead, both candidates will likely emerge bloody but not even. Mrs. Clinton still has by far the easiest path to the White House, but she'll have to work for a few more weeks. 6. Donald Trump uncensored Mr. Trump's candid hero discussion of his often unwelcome sexual exploits has dominated the US political world for the last two days, and they were front and center from the beginning of the debate. After a few fights and some pressure from moderator Anderson Cooper, the American public got the exchange they were all expecting and quite likely tuning in to see. It began with Mr. Trump asserting that nobody has more respect for women than I do, a response that had the reporters in the media working snickering. Then Mrs. Clinton took her shot. I think it's clear to anyone who heard the tape that it represents exactly who he is, she said. Because we've seen this throughout the campaign. And from there, the gloves came off. After dismissing his recording as locker room talk, for which he was sorry, Mr. Trump unloaded. 7. The Clinton trust factor Mrs. Clinton probably would have been satisfied if the debate had ended with that exchange, but that was just the beginning. The next few rounds would put her on her heels and prove that Mr. Trump had learned a few lessons from his prior debate shortcomings. Mrs. Clinton was forced, once again, to explain her use of the private email server as Secretary of State and, unlike the first debate, after saying she regretted the decision she quickly became mired in a more detailed explanation. Mr. Trump then carved up her deems and supervised deletion of emails on the server that they deem not work-related. If you did that in the private sector, you'd be put in jail, let alone after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress, he said. Mr. Trump also went on the attack when Mrs. Clinton was forced to respond to excerpts of her Wall Street speeches that were acquired by hackers possibly. 8. The disappearing Muslim ban Another telling exchange during the debate was when Mr. Trump was asked by an audience member to address the issue of Islamophobia. The Republican candidate said it was a shame, and then turned the answer into a discussion of the responsibility of American Muslims to report when they see something going on. He again repeated the unfounded allegation that they hours saw the San Bernardino attackers building bombs in their house but did not inform law enforcement. When pressed by Raditz on his proposed Muslim ban which still is detailed on his campaign website Mr. Trump said it had more cut into an extreme cutting. He went on to detail a greatest hits rendition of his immigration policy. Syrian refugees could be a Trojan horse. Illegal drugs are pouring over the US border with Mexico. Many undocumented migrants are criminals. Mrs. Clinton defended her call to increase the number of refugees admitted into the US and hit Mr. Trump on his since recanted Muslim ban. Donald has said, we're going to ban people based on a religion, she said. How do you do that? We are a country founded on religious freedom and liberty. Given that Mr. Trump's proposal, while popular among Republican primary voters, is his favorite 10 best smartphones for the 2016. Now that Google has announced the Pixel smartphones, it is time to see what Matthew Miller considers the 10 best smartphones available as we head into the gift buying season. With the Google Pixel announcement made earlier this week and no major smartphone announcements expected for the next few months, it's time to consider which device is best for this upcoming season. There are some fantastic options in the $400 range this year with three of them making my top 10 list. I'm still partial to the expensive flagship devices, but any of these 10 phones could easily satisfy just about anyone until the next. 6 of the best Android smartphones. June 2016 Let's take a look at a selection of the very best Android handsets currently available. 1. Samsung Galaxy S7 Without a doubt, the flagship of Android handsets, tech spec. 
Android 6.0 Marshmallow 5.1 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED Display with a resolution of 2560 x 1440 pixels 576 pixels per inch Snapdragon 820 processor The Samsung Exynos chipset is